Next up is chapter 9. Underneath the glacier, Diego, Sid, and Manfred investigated the gigantic cafe where they had landed. The walls were covered with paintings of humans and animals in all sorts of situations. Sid pointed to a group of cuddly, drawn big cats. Look, he said, tigers! He follows the trail of tigers grimacing at the painting that showed a saboteur attacking an antelope. Yeesh, said Quill. Watching Brad Gold, his fingers at the tiger paintings, looking frightened. It's okay, said Whisper to the baby. Look, the tigers is just playing tag with the antelopes. Then the sloth glances at Diego and smirked at him. With the teeth, Diego shrugged, picking at his fangs with a sharp claw. Come on, Sid. The tiger growled. Let's play tag. You it. Sid laughed nervously and quickly turns to ex- examine my, the painting again. So, um, where are the sloths? He asked. You never, you never seen any sloth in these things. He said, she said, plotted a sketch of, of a massive animal. Look, Manny, he called. A mammoth. Ooh, Mammoth said flatly. Somebody pinched me. Sid peered more closely at the drawings. Hey, this fat one looks just like you. The sloth nodded, pointing at the male ma- mammoth. Near the male was a slightly smaller female beside the little calf. Oh, he's got a family. Th- that got Manfred's attention. He shoved closer to the drawing, standing between Diego and Sid. A distorted expression flickered in Manfred's eyes. He's happy, Sid added, tra- tracing the sketch with his fingers. Look, he's playing with his kid. See, Manny, that's your problem. That's what mammoths are supposed to do. Sid. Diego broke in. His voice felt the warning. Find the schema. She continued to not notice Mam- Mammoth's distress. Have a little baby mammoth. Sid. Diego repeated more and un- gently. What? Sid shot back, annoyed. Shut up. The tiger ordered. Sid opened his mouth, arms wide in protest. But he glanced at the mammoth and finally noticed the pain in Manfred's eyes. He let his sentence trail off. Oh. As Manfred stared at the drawings, the still images images began to move his in his mind, coming alive. He remembered playing happily in a lush meadow with his wife and his child Robbing in the sunshine until a horde of humans ran out of the woods, waving their spears frantically. Manfred faced off against the hunters, trying to hold them back with his imposing tux. Behind him, his family ran to the find the shelter. Then Manfred heard a steep, terrified scream. He wheeled around and saw that his mate and child was trapped against a rock wall by humans aiming spears at them. Before Manfred could move, another group of humans dropped heavy rocks from atop the rock wall. Bellowing in anguish, Manfred saw his family being crushed by rocks. He, his cries shook the landscape echo off, off the rocks around. Back in the cave, the mammoth shook his head, claiming the def- defasting memory from his mind. He breathed heavily, trying to regain, regain control of his own runaway emotions. Sid and Diego stared at Manfred with worried eyes. Then they turned back to the painting, clearing their throats uncomfortable, comfortably. Manfred kept staring at the cave drawings. He gazed at the sketch of the father mammoth cradling his young child in his trunk. 
Slowly, Manfred raised his own trunk toward the illustrations. Before he could switch it, Roshane's tiny hand touched the drawing gently. He was standing on his feet, propped up against the cave wall. Surprised, Manfred pulled back in his trunk. He blinked at the little human boy. Roshane struck the picture of the baby mammoth with his fingers, glancing back at the mammoth, as through the he was connecting the two of his mind. Then Roshane stumbled toward Manfred. Manfred caught the baby with his trunk. He slowly lifted Roshane off the ground. He caught his trunk, hugging Roshane close, nestling his cheek against the baby's head. Sis said sniffled, wiping the globe of his snout, snout from his nose with his paw onto Diego. Manfred swept Roshane onto his back and walked, walked out, out, out of the cave without a word. Sid followed. Diego took one last look at the painting of the mammoth family and let out a sad sigh. Then sauntered out of the cave after the uh, others. There's a line so to continue this, guys. Deep in the glaciers, deep in the glacier, place old valley, Luna led the, his hunters across the snowy plain. Their wolves pulled on the, on the, their leashes, sniffing the ground like hunting dogs. The humans stopped beside a set of footprints to escape my, mind them, but then they shook their heads sadly. They weren't tigers attack. The wolves sniffed around, digging their noses into the snow, but they seemed confused. Wuno tightened his grip on wolf, one wolf's leash. He had to admit that wolves had lost the scent. One of the hill hunters came over and took the leash from Wuno's grip. With a deep sigh, the chief looked down at his son's broken necklace in his hand. He shook his head, giving up hope. He had to lead the, his people through the glacier pass their to their settlement on the other side before the snow made that trip impossible. With a heavy heart, Runo followed his hunters back toward the west of the tribe. This line said two times. Thus continue on chapter well probably. Okay. Outside the cavern the animals found themselves on the edge of a wide flat field of snowy white. Manfred plucked the washing off his back and held him on his trunk as they rested. At the other end of the ex expanse, a particularly crumbled volcano loomed in the distance. Wow, would you look at that? Manfred said, sounding a message. The tiger actually did it. There's half peak. Next stop, Glacier Pass. The mammoth glanced at the tiger, nodding respect. How did I ever adopt you? Sid scrapped over to a shake. Did you hear that, fella? You're almost home. Manfred planted the baby backed up on his broad shoulders. Then the mammoth and the tiger hurried away across the field of snow, where Shane waved back at Sid. Sid caught up to them, they then stopped to bear down, and his hand hind paws. My feet are sweating, he muttered to himself, confused. Diego gone. Do we have to get a new, f new f flash every time your body does something? Sid hopped closer to them, his face steamy. Seriously, he called. My feet are really hot. Behind him, his paw prints melting, melted and bubbled in the snow. A low, deep rumble shook the field, echoing off the surrounding mountains. Diego and Manfred stopped in their tracks, looking around. Tell me that was your stomach. 
Manfred said uneasily. Shh! Diego hissed, listening with his ears, put up. The sudden silence in the field was unnerving. I'm sure it was just thunder, Sid said. Another terrifying rumble shook the ground and the animals started on their feet. From under ground, Sid added with a gulp. With the defining explosion of wade of bright orange lava blast out of the earth. The bomb of molten rock sizzled through the air, a steam of smoke trailing out behind it. All around, lava globes burst out of the ground with the sound of cannon fire racing into the sky. Run! The animals screamed. That's the end of chapter 9. Just continue on chapter 10 on the Ice Age, the movie No Fall. And this one announced Nero himself. Leave the comments how long it was about. Those all those. Just all lawns, lawn of those Nero and himself. I was read all of those. And share pictures of Ice Age 2002. Leave the comments. Make sure how long was the story on chapters. And all the long story of those himself. And and that was all two lines continued on those chapter. And that's the characters right there. Just himself. Make sure to hit subscribe button to continue chapter 10.